Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Woodworking Wisdom. We're in the uh, turning workshop today here at Axminster HQ. Um, we've got Steph. Um, you know, the, the video with the bowl went down so well, we thought we'd invite Steph back. Set me a new challenge. Yeah, <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to turn a pen today. Now, we've done quite a bit of it already. We've, we've done the prep side of things, um, and hopefully you would have seen that in previous videos. If you uh, wanted to see the preparation side of things, um, checking that link at the top of the chat there um, and that'll take you straight to the video where we've gone through all the stages to get to where we're just about to mount it onto the lathe but we're just going to do the turning today um, we've got Colwyn on questions and um, and on the cameras um, any any questions just pop them through to the chat um, me and Steph are microphoned up so Colwyn hasn't got one he's going to shout the questions out and we're going to answer them best we can Probably a good thing he doesn't have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's getting a bit naughty, doesn't he? So, Probably trying to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got um, one of the workshop laves here. So a couple of things that we need. What, what we've already done, I should explain that first. I'm just going to stretch across you here, Steph. So what we've done, um, Steph chose a pen. What pen did you go for? I chose the Vertex Fountain Pen. Okay, so we've got a nice little um, nice little fountain pen that we're going to turn today. So it's a two-part pen. Um, you can see we've got a lid and we've got the main kind of body of it. So what we've done is to, to drill these holes. Um, I believe that one was 10.5 and that one was 12.5. Uh, so we've got a lid and the body. Um, so two different drill sizes. And I've just drilled these out on a pillar drill and then glued the tubes that come included in the pen kit um, in there. Um, that's quite a lengthy process. And, and to be honest, I don't think we would have time to do it today with the drying times of glue and things like that. Um, so we've, um, we've drilled, glued, and then the last job we do is just to skim across this face um, so that this brass tube is, um, is flush to the piece of timber that we're gonna be turning. And we've got a lovely piece of laburnum here, um, two-toned. And just one last thing I've done. I don't know, it might be better on this overhead camera, Colin. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> you see, I've just drawn a little pencil line across the blank. Um, and that's so we can orientate it when we pop it on the lathe. Because um, we want to keep this lovely colouring running right the way through the pen. And all the grain to kind of match up as well. Oops, sorry, I'm drifting off screen. Okay, so we've got our first question. Um, yeah, just uh, Tom Summers was asking, can you use a branch from a tree? Hi, Tom. Um, you can. Um, quite a difficult thing to, um, to hold and drill. Um, it'd have to be really nice and straight. Um, and you might get a little bit of shrinkage off of that as it, you know, make sure it's dry. So if you pick the branch, um, bring it indoors um, and, and allow it to dry out or shrink and kind of warp a little bit. Um, then you can um, then you can drill it through, and um, yeah, that that should be fine. Um, not sure about keeping that bark edge on, and uh, you know these do have to be turned to specific sizes to to match up with the components of the pen. Um, so you know, on a branch, you're not going to have um, you you would have to kind of turn it down anyway, so you might lose that kind of natural look to it. Um, but yeah, you, you can do that. Um, this is all cut in the same orientation. So the grain's running through the pen that way um, to give it that kind of strength. All right, good. So um, to set up the lathe, we're gonna need a pen mandrel. So um, that's it. So there's a pen mandrel. Um, we've got the drive on this side and then we've got a live center on this side. So the drive, we just want to sort of shove up into the into the headstock there, mind the um, the tool rest. And then this one, same job over here. We're just going to sling it into the um, <clears throat> into the tailstock. Now, these bits on here, these are the bushings. So we need to just slide this one off. And this pen does come with a, um, a certain set size and each individual pen will have its own individual uh, bushing set. It's the shiny ones. That's right, nice shiny <laughs> ones. They're brand new out of stock. And I always like to imagine the pen 
kind of going on the lathe with the nib end or the um, kind of lid up towards the headstock. And that always, if I follow that pattern every time, um, you know, it, it makes it easier. I know what's what. Okay, so the lid bushing is the larger of the two. That's it, yeah. So is remember, we've got our 12.5 hole and we've got a um, 10.5. So the lid's the big one, so you've got it. Yeah. You've got one bushing on there and that one goes on. So then that one goes That's that it. Way. And we've got a bit of a kind of double-ended bushing there, two different um, diameters on it. Right, okay. That's it. Match up the lines. That's it. So we want that pencil line to run through. And then we've got another question. Yeah, one in there. yeah so Mark was just asking, did you sand or use a bow trimmer to flush the ends? To cut the ends so I sanded these. I used them on the disc sander. Um, so I put a square up against the a kind of abrasive face of the disc sander, so I had a square up against it, um, and then I just clamped a bit of wood down because it's really important that these, that you know, that these ends are are square with the with the um, tube that's inside. Otherwise, you start to have little gaps and stuff. So I sanded these. Um, just I just you know doing loads of pens. It's just a little bit quicker, but you could use a barrel trimmer. Um, then we've got another question from Nick. He's got an SK80 chuck, um, and he says, do you drill both halves separately or before you cut them in half? I would do them separately. Um, quite a long, um, quite a long uh, drilling process otherwise. Um, and on this one, we have got two different sizes. We've got the 10.5 drill bit for the main body, and then where the um, kind of nib of the pen is a bit larger, um, that was a 12.5. So we wouldn't have been able to do that on this pen anyway. Um, but there are pens that, that come, you know, a, a two-piece pen um, with the same size. Um, but I would always drill them separately. Um, as you get deeper and deeper into these cuts, um, sometimes the swarf, the, the waste that you're cutting, can kind of um, get caught up in the flutes of the drill bit. And it will kind of bully it one way or the other. And you find that the the drill bit will drift off. Um, so, you know, generally, unless they're really short bits on the smaller pens, we would drill them individually. All right, good stuff. So, um, Steph, we want to lock off on the um, on the tail stock there. Yeah. So. So we're just going to uh, bring right. that one up. Yeah. Okay. And make sure that's really kind of um, home. Okay. Yeah. And then we can um, turn the tailstock handle there because that needs to pinch on our... It feels pretty pinchy already. Yeah. Okay. Just make sure that that is unlocked. So let's have another oh, okay. go at that. <laughs> there we go. Um, make sure the tailstock's not traveling here. Yeah. So it's it's actually pinching. Is that still winding? So that means we need to just tighten off the tailstock. That's it. That'll be That'll be fine. And then... And then if we rock that back and forth, yeah. you see the spindle moves with it. Yep. Okay. And then we can tighten this one off um, just to make sure everything's nice and locked, nice and sturdy. Does that one have to be really tight as well? No, no. Quite often we take that on and off as we, um, you know, because if this is a little bit loose in a minute, we may want to tweak this um, hand wheel on the back here. Okay. Okay, so another question. One more question just before we start. Um, do you always use a mandrel or do you just sometimes just between centers? So you can turn these between centers. Um, I always use a mandrel. Um, I find it really kind of safe way of working. The, the blank's got nowhere to go if, um, you know, if you did catch it or anything like that. Um, but you can turn these between centers. Um, but you need to get your the measurements of the um, components of the pen right. Um, and these bushings sit on the um, on the mandrel, which allow us to turn down to that diameter. If you're turning between centers, you may need to turn yourself some little bushings um, to um, get your sizings right. Because these, um, you know, the, the components of the pen in the packet um, are a specific set size. And we want to turn those pieces of timber or acrylic, polyester, whatever you're using, um, down to that exact size so there's no steps or ridges um, between the components on the pen and the um, kind of body or material that we're that we're turning all right good stuff That's nice. so we, let's um let's bring our tool rest in nice and close okay 
That's it. So we've got that little cam lever there to, to bring it in nice and close. And I think we're going to have to come, come up, up a bit as well. Yeah. And you, you may need to bring it back to, to bring yeah. it up. That's cool. So is this going to be just below centre? Just below centre. Usually about kind of six mil. Six below mil below centre. Center. Yeah. Is that um, too high? To make sure we're just touching on there. So, yeah, yeah that's good. And we're just going to come down ever so slightly. So I'm just going to tweak that. Did you know, even just when doing smidge. the bow, that was in this one, knowing what's centre and what's six mil below centre when you're not super up to date <laughs> on your mill, uh, yeah. it's quite tricky to tell. So it's kind of, you know, like half a centimetre, just over. Okay. That, that looks it looks about right. And you'll get a feel for it. when If you feel, um, once you start cutting, um, we'll, we'll, you know, if that handle has to come up really high, it means probably... Um, that the tool rest is um, too high. Okay. Okay, so we need to, to, to drop it down a little bit. Well, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, good tip. Okay, <laughs> so um, we are going to use a roughing gouge um, to get started. We're going to we're going to start to take away uh, some of this material, and you can see on this pen blank um, on these uh, these bushings, they're just ever so slightly different diameter sizes, um, and that's what we're going to turn these down to, Steph. These piece of wood need to come down to the same size as these bushings on on each whatever of the bit of metal's closest to it that's how that's thick it needs to be yeah exactly yeah okay so let's crank that over on the on the um on the back there make sure we're not touching anywhere yeah that this isn't fouling on the tool rest and that looks good perfect now this lathe um doesn't start at zero mm -hmm. um, so when we turn this on um it is going to start um rotating Okay. okay, but have but it done we're as going low to as bring that dial down as much as we can to sort of feel it stop. That's good. Yep. We can take off that emergency stop button. Yeah. And then when you press the green one, um, it's going to start to um, to rotate. But we need to put our goggles and visors on first. Yeah. Okay. So another question. Whilst, yeah. Whilst you're doing that, um, Frederick's just asking: Can you hold the bushings directly on the live and drive sensors, meaning doing each blank separately? So going back to your previous question. Yeah. You know. So use uh, put the bushings directly on. Yeah, bushings in the blank and then live and drive into the bushings. Yeah, absolutely. So usually I do that. I'll just get my bushings in there and then just slide the whole thing on. It should, um, you know, where they're held on those brass tubes, everything should align really nicely. Oh, I think he means without turning it on a pen mandrel. Yeah. In so like the question before, so putting the send putting the bushings on the centers of our mantra. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, what you might find, um, no, I think you need that, that bug running right through really. Um, the drive would have issues slipping. Yeah, exactly. So you've got metal on metal, um, the, you know, it, 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 you'd have to find the, the perfect center, maybe something like a light pull drive, something like that. Or um, I would I would struggle with that to be honest. I would um, I would go with the mandrel and not put the uh, bushing straight onto the um, onto the drive because you know it could potentially jackknife or something like that as well if you start putting uh, pressure on. This um, mandrel is going to keep everything nice and straight. Um, if you've got it pinched either end um, and the, the, there's not much friction between it, um, it, you know if you start putting a lot of pressure on it, it could potentially like jackknife or something. Sounds like that could be painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but a great project for beginners, these pens. Uh, really nice and safe. We don't want to worry Steph before we get going. Um, but with that mandrel, it makes everything nice and safe. Everything's going to be held really nice and um, tight and um, firm on, on the mandrel. Okay, so we're going to start off with a roughing gouge. Okay. That one? Yeah, good job. Nice. <laughs> Um, and let's just press that green button, let the lathe kind of pick up a bit of momentum. Okay, good. So what so kind of speed are we running at? Cool, good question. So we're starting off, um, this is running at 1,000 RPM. This is on the higher speed settings on the lathe. Um, we've got three settings that we can go to. Um, but we're on the higher one, so it starts at around about 1,000 RPM. And we can crank that up to 
just over sort of 2,000, maybe 2,200, something like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Again, we've not got much diameter on this pen, so we can run very fast. And that's going to work really well when it comes to polishing and things like that. Okay. So. Yeah. We're going to pop the chisel up on the uh, tool rest there. That's it. And try and bring a finger further up the tool rest. That's it. And we can feel this little lip on the back here. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to use as our guide to keep things nice and straight. Okay. Okay. So just advance the, the, um, the gouge just a little bit so it touches on. Yeah. And we're starting to see a little shaving there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe lift the handle a touch. And then we can start to bring it along. All the way along? Yeah. Yeah. Just mind that gap where it <laughs> might go further in. Okay. That feel okay? Feels okay. Yeah. <laughs> What I might do is just bring that tool rest down a touch. Let's turn that off. I'm just going to bring this down ever so slightly because it felt like the handle was up a bit high there. I don't have quite chunky fingers. Good. <laughs> <laughs> now we stop the lathe. We can, um, when we turn it back on, it's going to go straight back up to that 2000 RPM. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we've, we've turned it on before, so we know we're not going to have any surprises. And that just allow it to pick up the speed. Yeah. And we're going to do the same thing. Bring Gives that... up the speed quite quickly. Yeah, 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 we will do. Right, same again. That's it. Mm. So just bring the chisel in. Or the gouge, I should say. Okay, I'm going to hit the extractor. So we're getting a little bit of dust off of this uh, laburnum. Need a little bit of wax on it to make it slide a bit better. <laughs> so maybe um, grip a little bit um, harder with your your thumb, yeah. and we'll point that finger like we're pointing. Along, so what was the like rotate there. that around towards me a bit? Or? No, no, just straight on like that's fine. That sounds better now. Yeah. Maybe sometimes uh, with a light grip. The, um, those hard edges coming around hitting the uh, gouge sometimes That's gives good. a little bit of in vibration. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Ooh. That's it. Good. Yeah. So just keep going like that. Yeah. Process. Okay, <laughs> so it's a repetitive cut. Maybe try and um, take a little bit more. Yeah, you're taking a bit more with this cut. Yeah. Good. That's it. Let's um, hit that red button, see if we've got rid of the flats. So we've got there. a little flat on there, yeah. And a little one there as well. But that's coming on nicely, yeah. Let's just keep going as we are. Okay. Yeah, 
Uh, you're doing really well. So I would, um, I'll chip in if I think I'm going for a hug. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> Feels a bit like I'm juddling as I'm going along the blank. Okay. Yeah, it takes Does a little bit of practice to, for things to be, you know, to get that sort of smooth run along. And it could also be because we have the, um, the sapwood and the heartwood in this. Yeah. Um, so they've got probably different, um, you know, different densities. You might be feeling that coming around and kind of hitting the cutting edge. Yeah, okay. So if you'll notice that home, um, Steph is keeping that gouge nice and straight at 90 degrees for the um, for the workpiece. Um, you know, so the handle and the kind of um, steel of the, the, the gouge are moving at the same time, a nice kind of constant flow. Um, what can happen? Do you mind if I just have a, yeah, a little go, do. Steph? So I'm not going to do any turning on your pen. This is 100% yours. I but what mind. can happen is um, if you keep the handle... Um, so let's go on camera two a moment, Colin. Um, if we keep the handle kind of locked onto our hip and we start um, doing this with the chisel, what we're actually doing is sending that in a kind of curve and that's going to undercut um, where these bushings are. So everything nice and straight on the, um, on the pen. We're going to keep that kind of um, nice straight cut at 90 degrees to the workpiece. You were kind of doing it instinctively, but um, you know, something worth mentioning for, for people at home, um, they want to keep that angle nice and um, straight. Okay, so I feel like the handle's coming up quite high now. Yeah, it feels higher. Yeah, so now we've, um, you know, we've lost a bit of the um, kind of the um, what we've got, diameter of the pen. Yeah. We can just bring in that a little bit closer, closer to the workpiece, and that should allow you to drop the handle down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. And we'll notice just while we've stopped here, mm. we're coming close to our bushings, or especially on the lid. Yeah. Got a little bit more to go on the bottom. Should I focus a bit more on the bottom? No, on I'll just them, keep or? going the way you are, um, but just to notice that we're we're coming up close on, okay. the, on the lid. All right. Cool. Perfect. Nice. That feels a bit easier now that we've moved it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we like reduce that overhang. Yeah. So you know, bringing that tool rest in has reduced the overhang. Allowed us to drop the handle just a touch, and um, and that way you're not kind of lifting your shoulder. Um, it's a whole lot more comfortable. And if you're ever doing something like this and you feel, oh, that's uncomfortable, I'm having to lift my hand up too high, or um, just you know take note of that feeling and um, and see if there's any way you can change your body shape or um, your position make yourself a bit more comfortable. Right, now we're really close to the bushes. This is looking really good. Well done, Steph. <laughs> so we're, we're really close here. And actually a really nice finish you're getting off of that. I just want to show you something yep. um, about the bevel rubbing. And I'll just Sorry. take a tiny little bit off of here, right? So, so I'll come out I here think, so I can yeah, see you a bit that's better. That's great, thanks Steph. I'm just going to bring the speed up a touch as well while we're here. Um, so I'm going to bring the bevel of this roughing gouge in contact with the material. So that's touching on now. Yeah. And if I just lift the handle ever so slightly and we start to get that dust, that's almost like a little finishing cut. 
Okay. So we've got that bevel rubbing, much like you did with the bowl. Yeah. You know, when you, you touch on, but you're not actually cutting anything. Yeah. And then we just lift the handle so we see that little bit of dust. And then we'll keep it at that angle and just kind of travel along the pen, all right? Okay. And just have a look, you've got a tiny bit there. We're pretty much down to size on this end. And then okay. a little bit to trim either end there as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Yes. So bevel touching. Is that touching? That's it. And then we're going to lift the handle. So you just see a little bit of dust, there it is. And then we can travel along, keeping the chisel at a nice constant angle. Perfect. Lovely. <laughs> so I'm having a little feel here around the back of the um, the project so that I'm not um, going to get my finger my trapped feel. anywhere here. Yeah, have a little feel on the back there. That's pretty. That's pretty good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But so just potentially them. a little bit on that end. So where do I, do I stop? Like where do I start? I would so if we're looking at it, you just see it just flares out from about ten mil in. Yeah. It just starts to flare out. So I would start my cut right on that high spot. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna rub our bevel there and then we're just gonna creep it along that ten mil and then, and then stop. we'll stop. Okay. Yeah. I think actually I'm gonna come in a bit closer on that camera, don't mind. That's it, good. So let's keep going though, because we're still... Have a little feel, yeah. We're still like probably about a mil to go. Yeah, yeah. So just keep going with the bevel keep rubbing. Doing, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Good. That had a slightly bigger shave in there. Yeah, so not up as high. No, yeah, that's it. So you want that little dusty kind of finish. It's still quite a step. Yeah, so it's just a couple more like that. Oops, sorry. No, it's good. And then maybe this time we'll just gently roll onto the bushing. So we're not cutting the bushing, but we're going to go the other direction. Okay. Right. That's it. And then just creep across. There we go. That looked good. Is this going to look more? Yeah, we'll just keep going. <laughs> oh, that's tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this one together. Okay. So just as you were, we're going to touch on there, lift yeah. till we get our dust, and we're going this way towards the headstock. All right. That's that's flush with the bushing, but you feel that little yeah. step. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to touch on, bevel rubbing. Lift the handle, a little bit of dust, and we're going to come this way towards the tail stop, and then off. So a really okay. gentle little cut, and that feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Happy. So this now, one. same thing on this one. And I would probably just concentrate on these two ends now. So, so going that way. Yeah. Nice, I can it's see that like, kind of burnished finish come up. You see yeah. that? So, yeah. That's it, this is dust. Oh. And it's getting a little bit high again. Is it? I'm quite dusty though. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to creep this in. That's 
That's it, lovely. Okay, happy with that? No, still a bit stuck. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. So I'm sorry if this is... Uh... <laughs> Stop apologising. <laughs> this is your first pen. It's, you know, you want to get it right. It's lovely. You've done a grand job. And it's better. always best think? to take too little off. I would do another couple of them. Yeah. And you know, let's do another one together. Okay. So we're going to touch on the bevel. Yeah. Bring up my handle. There's your bit of dust. And we can go back and forth and just whiz that little bit off. Bring it along. We're going to come along right the way along the blade. And then just roll it off the end. I like to clear that bit of um, you know, waste. Is that got it? It's a little bit. Okay. So, again, bevel rubbing, handle up. Mm -hmm. There's our dust. We're going to just come out of that, do it again. All right, don't let go of the chisel or the gouge. All right, we yeah. have a little feel. So any little pips either end. So keep doing what you're doing. We've got another question here. From I'll Colin. let you answer that then. Uh, keep going. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop the extractor off for a minute yeah. while we've got our question. Sure. Uh, a couple of questions for you. Um, so Ed was just asking, uh, what's the benefit of drilling on a filler drill over the lathe? Yeah. So for um, for drilling on the filler drill. Well, usually I do um, quite a lot of pens in one go um, and having the uh, pen centering vise on the um, on the pillar drill, you can really just open up the jaws of that, stick another blank in and it's almost more of a production line um, and, and generally potentially a little bit more accurate accuracy on the pillar drill. Um, and you know, depending on what size lathe you've got, sometimes the, the I mean, this one would be fine, but um, on some of the smaller lathes, getting that um, that drill chuck, the drill bit, your pen blank with the um, long pen jaws on it. Um, quite often, there's not enough length on the on the, on the bed of the um, bed of the lathe. But for me, it's accurate speed and accuracy on the pillar drill. Uh, yeah, just one more question. Uh, Nick's just asking, why, why are rapid gouges and not a spindle gouge? Um, just because, uh, well, I don't use a spindle gouge much. To be fair, this is, um, you know, this is Steph's first one. And a, a roughing gouge is a really nice kind of um, user-friendly, intuitive tool. Um, and we using this kind of bevel rubbing, lifting the handle um, kind of cut. It's going to give us a nice finish as well. So it's not just for kind of uh, whizzing material off. You can get a nice finish off straight off the roughing gouge. Um, and it's a nice straight project. Um, you know, spindle gouge, I would be more into kind of beads and coves and things like that. Um, and it's personal preference as well. Uh, I know Colwyn likes to use the bowl gouge. He likes to use it um, almost like a skew. So he's the, the kind of angle that he uses that at. Um, really whizzes material off and, um, you know, gives him a lovely finish as well. So I know Colin and Jason prefer to use a bowl gouge to, to turn these pens. But um, I like the roughing gouge. That's, that feels like really it. good, Steph. Is that yeah, okay? It feels really good. All right. Yeah. Enough? So let's just turn the lathe off. Have a little look at what's going on. We've got a lovely two-tone. I'm not sure if this see this on camera, but we've got a really good finish off of this. Steph's done a great job. It looks like there's a little bump there. A little bump? Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. So I'll get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm patient with the sanding though. <laughs> I think oh, I'm just you're not gonna do rubbing. much um not gonna do much sanding on this. We've got a lovely you see that the, the light reflecting off it already. It looks beautiful. Yeah, so you're doing a great little finishing cut there. Um, I quite like let's, that let's cut try to be another. It. Let's try another tool. If we're gonna um, just take off that little bump there, we could use um, the um, skew chisel as a scraper. Not the common way skew chisel though. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's got a long handle. Actually, no, it's not. Yeah, it's a long handle. <laughs> so all I'm doing here, Steph, we're gonna go. We're gonna do a bit of scraping now. When we scrape, we want to scrape kind of on center. Okay. So let's offer that um, that chisel up. That, so it's going to be flat at ninety degrees, just like we did with the other one, um, and that face there. Yeah. So you know you can bring that into contact. It's going to take off that high spot. Yeah. And keep um, parallel to the pen, just just by keeping it flat like that. Okay. This could be where it all goes wrong. And again, nice and gentle on approach. We're just going to kind of tickle it off we want to see that dust we don't want to see a shaving on okay same speed this point. yep same speed okay what were we on there 2200 I, two oh, two, I cranked it up to oh, 2400 rpm okay so yeah it's good right so parallel parallel you parallel? can see it's sort of hitting on center yeah, yeah. i think yeah that was good so we just need to be careful of this heel here that we don't drag the heel and you can see where that dust's coming off on that high spot, yeah? Yeah. So, so what am I doing? I'm just rocking it back and forth. I wouldn't rock it back no. and forth in case that heel engages. So we're just trying to keep a slight, you know, keep a, keep this part of the chisel just back a bit. Is that right? That's perfect. Great. And you can see where it's coming off on that high spot, yeah? Yeah. That cool. feels much better. Yep, are there any nice other were there any other high spots while I'm here? <laughs> I think we're good. I think we're good. There's potentially a little one here. Okay. So nice and flat up against the um, so the cutting edge is, is parallel to the uh, workpiece. And again, it's just coming off on that high spot, yeah? Yeah. And that's why we're being extra careful, really gentle. Do I it's... sorry, carry on. No, no. <laughs> Do I need to move it along? So obviously, if I'm trying to get a high spot from here, do I still want to kind of move it along the piece? You don't have or just to. Sort of you just hold it. Kind of hold it there. It's not going to affect it's... the finish that I've kind of no, done. No, with. no, no. Okay. No, it's just going to keep scraping on that high spot, and that's what we want. All right. So we can just kind of hold it there and just be an extra careful for that um, kind of the heel and the toe to not cut a line. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right. I think we're down to size now. So everything's nice and straight. We've got ever such a slight curve leading into um, both of these, um, the you know, the body and the lid, which is going to look really nice. I like it. Yeah, it looks cool. Oh, Good please, job. So, far. so right. let's, um, let's pop the skew back. Thank you. So just touching on scraping there a little bit. We want to remove our tool rest. We're going to do a bit of sanding now. Okay. So in, just take it out entirely. Take it out entirely. Yeah. Whenever we we turn choose uh, to go to sanding, we have a need to move that um, tool rest and stuff and right out there. of the way. Um, I I tend to lose the um, sorry the tool rest altogether. So take it out of the um, the banjo. Yeah. Okay. And then you're not going to hit your elbow on it or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So this feels really good. Um, so remember we've got uh, metal bushings here. Yes. And actually, on the sapwood of this laburnum, we've got that really kind of bright white streak. What we don't want to do is bring that metal um, dust when we're sanding onto the kind of lighter timber. Oh, okay, you're going to tell so, me how to avoid that, exactly, though, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't need to go really coarse with our abrasive because we've got such a good finish. So I'm going to start off. Where are we here? We're 150, I think. So 150 grit, we're going to start with, so not too coarse. What speed would you like? Um, we're going to just turn it down a touch. So if I turn it back yeah, on again. Yeah, around about sort of 1600 for this. All right, that's good. Yeah, yeah ish. Ish. <laughs> so um, to, to sand this in, and this would have taken off any like little shoulders that you may have left as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to roll onto the bushing, okay? Right. So we can sand this middle bit. As long as we don't go onto those bushings, we can just sand that normally. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we need to roll onto the bushing at uh, each of these ends, okay? Okay. If we start on the bushing and bring it this way, we're going to drag that metal dust into the porous timber. Okay. I'm going to pop the extractor back on for sanding. And 
try and use a fresh bit of the um, abrasive each time. That's it. And I'll just pull those little fluffy bits off. We don't want them to kind of entangle. That's good. And a new bit. You've got it. And then what we're looking at, Stefan, see these little white lines mm -hmm. just in the blank? We need to just pay a little bit of attention to them, get rid of those. Okay. They're kind of scratch marks. A little bit more on the middle of this one, and again, we need to use a fresh bit of abrasive each time. We don't want to pick up the wood dust, the, the metal dust, and then rub it back into the blank. And I have new bits. So this um, this grit abrasive is the one that's going to do all the hard work. It's going to get rid of any tooling marks that we may have left. So this is that you need to take time with. The work. Yeah. So um, keep going with this one until everything's kind of how we want it, and then the rest are just removing the previous um, abrasive scratch pad. Oh, that works. Yeah. So, is it getting hot on your finger? It's getting a bit warm. Yeah, so uh, through friction you're going to generate heat. And some of these pens are really thin, there's not much material, we'll show you in a minute. Um, and of course it is timber, so if we introduce too much heat into this, it could produce a crack. Um, so we need to keep that, um, that abrasive moving. And if you're feeling heat in your finger, um, that's time to kind of move on to a different bit because that timber's also receiving that exact same heat and we don't want it to, um, to crack or split. I think we're right with this one. It's got quite a bit of timber left on it, but it's just good to get in there and have it. So all I can see it needs doing, yeah, see we've got there. a couple of little lines here, so we're just going to roll onto there. That's it. And don't be afraid to use a little bit more pressure. No, we want that, you know, the phrases to really work for us. And then there's also a little line here. How can you see that? I can't see it's it. It's trained eye. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now let's stop the lathe, have a little look. Um, and we're much more likely to see it on the dark section of the timber than we are the light. So we see these two little lines here, you seeing that? Not really. And here. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 I see now. Yeah. So let, we want to spend a little bit more time up that top end, and then we've also got some here, all right? Okay, yes, yes, I see that. And being, uh, knowing that you're a bit of a perfectionist, we don't want those to see that. I know, but I'm so yeah, impatient, it's insane. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Which you know. <laughs> Lovely, well done. Well, let's just have a little peek. Yeah. Ooh. So you see Give that change of colour there? Yeah. That's um that's a tooling mark. And then we still got these ridges here, okay? So, do you mind if I just have a quick Go whiz? <laughs> I'm just going to. Um, I think Colin has to do this. Just press a little one. bit more pressure. <laughs> so, I've folded the abrasive over. Yeah. And I'm just hanging around in that area where we've got those scratches. Keep the abrasive moving. I can feel the heat now, so I'm going to swap onto my other blank there. And you see that material coming off, all that dust? Yeah. That's how we know it's really kind of cutting. All right? Okay. Push harder. Just a little bit more pressure. Not so much as going to really cause heat. 
but just a little bit more and I can see that that more dust coming off that's it's cutting its way through now. Good. So that was 150. Yeah. We're going to jump up to 240. Same again. Same again. But this time we don't have to spend so much time with it. We've gotten rid of all our tooling marks. Okay. So this one again is just going to um, just take away the scratch pan of the previous uh, braces. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then we're going to go 400. So we're going quite high with the abrasives on this one. There's the next one there, Steph. Next one already? Um, yeah, it feels lovely. Yeah. yeah, real smooth. So 400, and then we're going to go 600, all dry. Um, with this uh, abrasive. And you're right, just a moment. I'm going to go and find um, yeah, I'm good. a little um, a little pad. And then we can go on to this kind of terracotta, the 600 grit. See, this isn't producing as much, um, uh, you know, not cutting as much material now with these higher grit abrasives. Yeah. A little bit on the 600. That's it. Fold it over if it's coming uncomfortable. With it the, does with get surprisingly hot. Yeah, there's heat through friction. It's like every time it gets hot, you forget that it gets hot. Yeah, but it is a good <laughs> kind of uh, early warning sign that you're, um, you know, potentially heating up the timber as well. So it is, um, you, know, you start to um, find all this the kind of feedback that you're getting of it. When we see this dark material, that's the, that's the, the metal. Yeah, and that's what we don't want to drag into. It's surprising the, how the, much actually comes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah. Cool. Is that enough? Looking good, yeah. So we've got no more little white lines running across here. We've dressed all of those out using the abrasives. I think that's going to do, Steph. Yeah. Um, so that went up to 600 grit, right? Yes. This is a little micro mesh pad. This is 2,500 grit, all right? This is the first one. These go up to like 12,000 grit. Um, and again, we're just going to really quickly whiz over the surface of that okay don't spend too much time with this one because we don't want this one to overheat because it's got like an adhesive back on it all right yeah you can see some little dark lines appearing i hope it's not picking it up off of this let's have a little look let's turn the, the lathe off i've just got a question here uh, from Colin. Looks okay. Yeah, no, it's perfect. Well done. So we've got a question here. Uh, a lot of well, comments and questions. Lots oh, Colin. How well you're doing, Steph. Thank you. Um, been great, Steph. You'll be uh, chucking 30 pens out an hour by the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not sure if I'm patient enough for the first <laughs> sanding stage. I'll do all of it by the first sanding stage. <laughs> you can do all the sanding <laughs> stage. <laughs> There's a debate on what finish you're going to use, whether it's going to be friction polish, CA, or lacquer. Right. So, should we wait for that one? Yeah, Obviously. we're going to go. Do they super all give simple. a different finish? <laughs> they like do. A different yeah. Look. yeah. And there's a question here, so this is going to preempt what what you do do. Um, how well does friction polish last on pens? I'm conscious that it's it's a fairly thin finish and might wear off. Yeah. So we are going to use a friction polish, and um, that's our next stage, actually. Um, 
that will dull back a little bit. But we, and, and knowing Stephanie, she quite like likes that look. kind of uh, natural matte look. Um, so it will dull back to that kind of um, quite kind of natural timber color. Um, it is going to prevent the oils from your hands and things like that getting into the, the timber. Um, so it is a good kind of protective finish, um, but it is not ever going to be as glossy or shiny as the CA. Um, um, what was the other one we said? The, the lacquers. Lacquer. lacquer, again, can be a really kind of shiny, um, really kind of um, hard wearing finish. Um, so, you know, there, there's lots of different um, finishes out there. Um, I really like the friction polish because like Steph, we like the kind of matte wood um, look to it. I'd leave it with no finish on if I could, but I know that <laughs> yeah, I can't. Because that. So, that will get mucky when you're handling it. All right. Uh, Maria's got a suggestion she, that she uses friction polish, then some penta and as wax over the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can do that. You could put a, a, a friction polish and a, a wax on top. So that'll um, give it like a matte kind of slash satin kind of finish. Yeah, that'll give it more of a kind of, yeah, like a satin kind of luster yeah. to it rather than, um, and it might enrich some of this colour, um, but you're going to see this um, change colour really nice when that friction polish gets on, and we'll get that really strong con contrast uh, between the sap and the heartwood. All right, so we've got a nice little blank here. We I fished this out of Colwyn's bin, actually. Is. Bin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's where it that was... Sacrilege. <laughs> uh, there was, um, what were you doing, chess pieces or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. I've done quite well with my blanks. I've got this one. I've got my nice bowl blank. Yeah. So I've done well doing so far. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, friction polish. Um, we're going to use uh, a friction polish on here. And we're going to apply that with a bit of blue roll. This one. The... Yeah, Ooh. so chestnut friction polish. Um, oh, wrong way around. There you go, yeah, upside the down. Well done, Steph. Now I know what it feels like when you guys are holding things up for the cameras <laughs> and going, oh, which way around does it go? <laughs> yeah, you do get used to it. <laughs> so I'm just making like a little pad. I've got some blue roll here, potentially a bit too much there, to be honest. Um, but making like a little pillow, a little pad. Um, and we want to put enough of that material on here okay. that it's not going to completely absorb by the blue roll. Okay, and I would um, I would put that on top of the uh, of the bottle, keep it like that, yeah, and then do it again in a slightly Ooh. different position. <laughs> Not <Okay>. like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. You did it so well the first time. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting it on the second time to, uh, well, to pour it. So I stopped but that's it good. It didn't go on your shoes, so uh, that's, that's all right. Thing. It's gone in the shaving. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody at home saw, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to, when we turn the lathe on, yeah. okay, we're going to hold this up to it, and we're going to kind of pinch it. We want to keep hold of this tissue, yeah. all right, and we're just going to work that back and forth, back and forth on there, and you'll see it kind of turn um, shiny, and you'll see a little band of light just come across the top there where it becomes reflective. Okay. Okay. Um, if it, the tissue does grab, just let it go. Don't sort of feel like you need to wrestle it back off of there. Yep. Let it go. Turn off the lathe and we'll, we'll um, untangle it and okay. start again. Right. The tissue is not higher value than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so pinch it like that. Yep. And then we want to put a bit of pressure on this. That's it. Does, and it doesn't matter if I go on the bushings if back um, and forth? Not really. Not really, unless they've got like load of dust on them, which they haven't. Um, well, let's it. keep going back and forth. Keep going back and forth. And you see that little um, band of light? Yeah. And that will come into focus once we're, we're polished. All right. Maybe move it around a little bit so we're not just doing it on one spot. So we can apply a bit more of that polish, get those little um, microbeads working across the surface. This is very slightly abrasive, this um, friction polish. You can be the best polished pen ever. <laughs> and sand it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we need to just get a little shifty on a little bit. All right, oh, so okay. that's, that's looking good. Apply a bit more pressure if you feel it's not working fast enough. And then we'll move up on that lid. Okay. That's good. Is that enough? Yeah. So moving up onto the lid. 
and using a fresh bit of that tissue so we're getting some of that product on. I don't have any fresh bits. Uh, you know, where it's wet there. That's it, good. All right. Yeah. And you can see on camera, if you look on the screen, so you see those two little bands of light whizzing across the yeah. thing there. So we've got a nice little finish going on. It's becoming reflective. And now we want to turn to a, um, a clean piece of the um, blue roll. Yeah. Like any of that bit. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and then just um, wipe off any excess that might be staying on the surface. And again, that's just going to buff it up even more. Cool. All right. Yeah. So let's turn the lathe off, have a look, make sure we're happy. That's looking really nice. Good job. And cool. you've got that kind of glassy look. And like I say, we'll dull down. But look how um, that kind of contrast that is really darkened up the um, the heartwood of the of that laburnum. So nice, nice looking blank that. Okay. So we can um, we can slacken off on our tailstock mm -hmm. that's it that'll slide right the way off that's another great thing about this mandrel there's no bolts to undo no extra bushings to slide off um those bits can come off and try and keep them in the same orientation so we're not turning these bits around mm -hmm. we've got a little table here which i'm just going to slip under there while you're taking that off okay so i'm going to use the knockout bar here and we may need to just come out on that number three camera so just knocking out that drive center we've taken the, the um the tailstock back Can sorry i'm that? just adjusting a camera here mind my belly <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay so we've got our little table here we've got our pen press yeah so we'll keep that out of the way for a moment. Yes. And I'm going to slide that tailstock all the way off. Yep, so that can just lie here, Steph. We've got um, a little table that we've made to go, um, kind of sits in the bed. Um, oh, can I take the visor off? Yep, yeah, that oh. visor can come off now. Get rid Thank of my you. balls, well done. Got all those bits. And then we've got our bits of our pen. Um, okay, so let's start on the lid. Um, so we want the end cap and clip. That's good. Right. Um, and this, you can see that this is uh, sprung. We don't need to come this way a little bit. So we've got a little sprung arm here. And then we might need to just remove some of those. So we've got that opened up that gap there. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So which end do I put in first? The cap? Or... I'll put the cap in first. Yeah. yeah. End cap and clip. So does it go that way round? No, we want to put that it way. that way round. We want our metal components against the kind of plastic or nylon jaw. Okay. All right. Yes. Nervous now. And then a nice firm kind of push in. You might need to flip oh, right, over yeah. one of those little collars so we've got the right spacing. That's it. Really nice, quick and easy, kind of intuitive pen press, this one. And just mind you, don't get your finger pinched. That's it. <laughs> You've done that before. Carl was laughing. Is that in? I think so. Nice and tight and flush. Yeah. Um, no, I can see a little gap. So can we're going to just give that a bit more of a squeeze. That's it. Nice Scared one. to break it at this point. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got this other part that's going up into the lid that is uh, threaded internally. And that's where you're going to kind of screw in the, um, the nib. Right. All right. So it's kind of safely tucked away up in that lid. That's it. Pushing it together. Oh, heave. Heave is not coming out again. All right. Um, and because these, we, we didn't quite line that up. Usually we want to line that bit up so these two oh. um, nuts look the same. But, you know, being as they are nuts, you can get a couple of spanners on there and just realign that. That's right. All right, you see that? Yeah, I do. I didn't cool. even think about it. <laughs> and neither did I until it started <laughs> pressing in. Um, right, so, I've got my other bits up here. Lovely. So you've got your little bowl there. I do. So I've got... That's these it. three bits so those two threaded sections need to go in either end 
of our... And it doesn't um, matter which one goes in which end? doesn't matter. No, they're exactly the same component. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. And then one in the other end. It's good. Sorry, I'm trying to do this as quick as possible no, without don't. breaking the plan. Don't rush. Okay. Cool. So and that was. So do you remember which way around it went? I do. Wonderful. Yeah, so that goes, that's your end bit. And then we should have a nib that we'll also yeah. screw in. It's already in a little, still in its little bag to keep it. If you took everything out of the bags, didn't you? And I'd said, <laughs> right, just pop the um, nib back in the bag. We don't want that getting dusty or anything like that. Cool. Ooh. Oh, it's so magnetic. It's magnetic. Oh, that's there. really nice. So it's got a magnetic lid that just I didn't kind know of that. pops onto the body. And you should, if you pop it on the other end, is it magnetic on the tail as well? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that is a smart pen, isn't it? <laughs> lovely pen. It looks really cool. And what a lovely um, pen for your first one. Yeah. I'm a bit jealous, to be honest. You should, you should have yeah. picked this pen kit then, Ben. <laughs> no. it looks really nice. So that is a, a Vertex, uh, Vertex fountain pen. Yeah. And how did you find that? Was that stressful or? It was wasn't right? stressful at all, no. No? No. Good. Oh, I quite like it. I might carry on practising pen turning. We're still turning. friends. We're pen? still friends. We're still married. <laughs> sorry? Is the link to that pen listed in there? It should yeah, be, yeah. The link to the pen is in... Sorry, Steph, we've just seen a... a sorry. <laughs> here now. Just getting too interested into the in <laughs> so yeah that's uh, the vertex fountain pen really nice um really nice little bit of kit that um yeah i did have my uh where's my other pen oh so upcoming demo if you're interested in pens and pen kits did a little um little celtic knot pen which we've got coming in the upcoming weeks um so if you wanted to uh, if you're interested in pens and wanted to turn more this could be a really nice little blank. Um, we're going to make that soon and show you how to do it step by step um, to make one of these little Celtic knot blanks. But I think you've done a fantastic job of that stuff. Thank you. Um, and that's about it for today. Yeah. That's all we've got time for. Any more questions? Anything in the chat, Colin? No, just lots of well done, Steph. Thank you. <laughs> I'm more than happy to come back again. <laughs> so if you want to set me and Jason a challenge suggestions are welcome he'll That's love it, it. Yeah. he'll love it jason's <laughs> turn next he might not yeah it might take us 10 hours rather than one um because he might set me an impossible challenge but <laughs> all a little bit of fun isn't it? definitely thank you for having me yeah thanks for that it was good that's a really yeah. nice little pen there i, I shouldn't sound so surprised should I really? <laughs> <laughs> no, good job um and thanks again for for tuning in and uh and watching this demonstration um, if you've enjoyed it, uh, give us the thumbs up, um, like and subscribe, and um, we'll see you again soon for more Woodworking Wisdom. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.